people like Jules Verne asked to imagine what transportation devices people would have in 1950, imagined a kind of Victorian living room yes. with plush of velvet furniture in a gondola at the bottom of an enormous balloon which went from New York to San Francisco in only a few weeks. And he was, of course, the most imaginative speculative thinker of the 19th century. Others would have been more cautious. So it's very difficult to predict far into the future, even a hundred years, when uh, not only new technology, but new scientific principles may be discovered. But, uh, but the thing that, uh, that I find most striking uh, is uh, the enormous, remarkable capability of virtually every small child for, for learning. They, they start out uh, eager, intellectually wide-eyed, uh, asking extremely clever questions about the world. And then something happens, uh, by and large, to, to discourage them. And I think it's a tremendous waste of, of natural resources. Uh, for example, a kid asks, uh, Mommy, why is the grass green? And very often you get a, uh, an answer like, oh, don't ask dumb questions, or who knows, uh, when in fact it's an extremely profound question. And how much, how much better well, why would is it be? Why is the sky blue, or anything like it, that? Yeah. In both those cases, it, it goes to the fundamentals, in one case of biology, and the other of a, of a kind of physics. How much better it would be to, uh, to say to the child, uh, that's a good question, Johnny. I don't know the answer. Maybe we can look it up. Or nobody knows. Maybe when you grow up, you'll be the person to find out. Uh, I think kids which are, who are discouraged from asking those questions wind up learning the lesson that there's something bad about using the mind, and we lose resources. And we need those intellectual resources because we are in very perilous times. And I think the complex and subtle problems that we face can only have complex and subtle solutions. Right. And we need people able to think complex and subtle thoughts. And I believe a great many children have that capability if only they're encouraged. The Milky Way galaxy is composed of some 400, I'm, I'm converting from American numbers to British numbers, 400,000 million separate suns, each of which more or less uh, like our own. We now think that, uh, that planets are commonplace, that uh, most uh, of those stars probably have planetary systems. We know the origin of life is uh, likely under uh, general cosmic circumstances, and there were thousands of millions of years for evolution to happen. Under those circumstances, it seems uh, extraordinarily arrogant of us to think we are the only inhabitants yeah, yeah, of this cosmos. How are we going to find them, though? I mean, it, okay, that's, that's so there's two I, questions. How are One, they going to find us? Right. The first thing to uh, to bear in mind is that uh, sort of tooling around uh, the galaxy in uh, in spacecraft, uh, 